I'm delighted to share with you two of the new windows in our John Paul II Chapel. The first here is of St. Therese of Lisieux, who's one of my personal uh, patrons, and she's the patroness of the missions. Even though she never left the uh, walls of her convent in Lisieux, she had the heart of a missionary. So she becomes the patroness of the missions, and that's a big part of the new evangelization. One reason, too, why John Paul II named her a doctor of the church, putting her with the with Aquinas and with Augustine and these great figures. That's why she's here. You see, she's holding a depiction of the face of Jesus, uh, really from the Shroud of Turin. And then you see right next to her here is a depiction of a child Jesus. She was known as Saint Therese of the child Jesus and of the holy face. We can sentimentalize her too quickly and associate her simply with the child Jesus, but she was also associated with the face of the suffering Christ. And I think gives it a certain poignancy you notice down here the little depiction of L'Histoire du Nam, which is the great book of hers, the story of a soul, which galvanized the world when it came out. It's because of that book that she's so uh, well known. You see on the very top a depiction of a basket. It's like a sewing basket filled with all sorts of things. That's a famous scene in her story of the soul. As a young girl, her sister came to her with the sewing basket and said, what do you want? Do you want yarn or do you want something else? And little Therese famously said, I choose all. <laughs> and so that becomes a sort of motto for her in the spiritual life, that she's not settling for anything secondary or mediocre. She chooses all. On the other side there, the little uh, shoes is a curious story from the, uh, from the book. There was a custom in the Martin family that after midnight mass, they'd all come home and their father would put little goodies in their shoes that were arranged by the fireside. Well, Therese loved this custom, and so when she was in, in her early teenage years, she comes home, and she goes upstairs to get ready for this little tradition, and her father, she overheard saying, thank God this is the last year we'll be doing this. And normally, that would have uh, sent Therese into a, into a depression. She would have collapsed in tears. But she decided at that moment, she said, on this birthday of Jesus, that she would allow Christ to come to birth in her, and she would come down the stairs and act with uh, nobility and with a good cheer, allowing the love of Christ to invade her life. Now, I know it's a very simple story. It seems like something no one would ever notice. But see, the spiritual order is different than the political order or the economic order. The big things are happening on the inside. When you make that sort of move, you cooperate with grace in that way, you've made a huge step in the spiritual life. So the shoes, it's a very simple scene. It represents something of enormous spiritual importance. In a similar way, this wonderful figure here of the little girl with her arms up in the air, uh, Therese stood in the great tradition of John of the Cross and Teresa of Avila, her Carmelite forebears, these spiritual masters that wrote uh, lengthy books on the different levels of the spiritual life, etc. And she said one time, you know, I, I'm just a little child, I mean, how can I compete with these great spiritual athletes? But then she kind of slyly remarked, I'm like a little child that just lifts her arms up in the air when her father comes, and her father can't resist that. So he picks her up and lifts her up high. And then she says, with a little smile, in fact, I get higher than even these great Carmelite forebears of mine. Beautiful reflection on the primacy of grace and our childlike cooperation with it, which is the heart of her little way. You see all around the uh, exterior, bright, deep red uh, roses. And of course, that's her famous symbol because she said, I'm going to spend my heaven doing good on earth. And the sign of that will be, she said, a shower of roses. And so the rose becomes associated with her interventions in the life of the church. The scene in the bottom I love, that's a depiction of her encounter with Pope Leo XIII. So she's 15 years old and she has this deep desire to join Carmel, even though 16 was the minimum age. So she was trying, talking to bishops and superiors and so on. They all said no. She finally joined a group of pilgrims going to Rome and she got an audience with Pope Leo XIII himself. And she knelt before him, you can see there, and she said, Holy Father, I want to enter a Carmel at the age of 15. And his first response was, you know, if, if um, uh, your superiors say so, it can happen. Then she pressed him. And he said, well, if God wills it, it'll happen. And then she collapsed in tears, and she was carried away bodily by a Swiss guard. So we have him depicted right there. 
um, it's a beautiful window that tells the story of this uh, uh, very simple figure, but one of tremendous spiritual significance. I hope now for the next hundred years or more, she'll be inspiring the seminarians who'll be praying in this chapel.